me that my mind was gonna go away. I never thought that they was they was for real. I kept on thinking that yeah, mommy, mommy's gonna come back. Mommy been operated on so many times. Mommy ain't going nowhere. She's, she's gonna be okay. The night I come in living foul, coming from one of my my daily drug binges and selling drugs and doing all that stuff, my mommy was taken away from me at six o'clock in the morning. So you tell me, what would you do? You everybody want to pass judgment on somebody? What would you have done when your mommy's last breath was in your arms? When she all she could say is that, be good, Bam Bam, be good. You know, when my mother was buried here, this thing is right in the heart of the city. She was put here. We had no money to, to give her a tombstone. We were just poor, broke. Everybody fussing and fighting about the about the, the grave and, 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 and the casket and all that stuff. And somebody else want to judge me? Somebody else want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, what would you do? Huh? What would you do? At that point in time after she left, they had to like, they had to, to, to pry me away from my mother because I would not let her body go. All I wanted to do was die. And for that, for, for, from that time on, I was trying to commit suicide. I was drinking everything. I was doing everything. Look at it. I mean, look right here. You got you. Look at it. We got, this This what everybody, this is what we use to get through our pain and our anguish, right? No. Uh-uh. I went through it. And I used all that stuff. We began to get high until 10 at night. You know, you see stuff that you can tell in the head, man, until you hit the scene, man. And when you hit the scene, you came out on the street, man. You got to turn, you turn yourself around. You seen the light when you was in the junk, you know what I mean? Yeah. So a whole lot of people go down and they ain't seen no light. Look how old I got before I seen the light. See, I was about damn near 50 years old, but I realized that, hey, man, it's time to get me to action up, you know what I mean? But life was good to me. I ain't it, but hey, but you was out there in that world, man, running wild and crazy, man. Project, cause there's nowhere to go back to, nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide. You gotta grow up. You gotta take responsibility and be a man. You can't go back and find an easy or soft way out no more. That's right, so I come home from jail with no money, with nothing in my pocket, go to my sister house, thinking that we would be okay. Before you know it, she tell me that I gotta leave because she don't think I'm gonna do the right thing. So I go to DC with $20 in my pocket. After crying on the sidewalk to my son, tell him I'll be back to get him. And thanks to my niece for giving me the $20, I show up in DC and the rest was history, y'all. I got a job as soon as I got off the bus, lived in shelters, and I went and became a seven time world champion. Boop, 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 bam! Yeah, it's on now. I ain't going back. If I go back, I'm going to die because I'm going out like a soldier. I got to keep going. I got to keep God first because God's in charge. It's about doing what God wants you to do. It's about doing God's work. It's a passion to live. It's a passion to have inner peace. And I'm going to bring it. I'm going to dig down deep. I'm going to wake up every day. And I'm going to say, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom of the other difference. Thank you for everything, God. Hey, yeah. So about using my staff out there. Uh, it was a reflex action. It won't happen again. No problem, Turbo. It definitely made our match more interesting. <laughs> you can't let a bad dream ruin your whole day, Jamie. Tell you, Ben, it was so real. It was more than a dream. Hey, what's up, guys? What about a nightmare of some sort? And my mom's obsessed with it. The dream it just, it just seems so real. And you were in it. Hmm? Yeah, you and Auntie M and Uncle Henry and Eddie. Come on, man. The guy is serious. Henry is one of the very cornerstones of the martial arts. For centuries, techniques of the Grand Masters were handed down to their children, who then taught their children to date three make these schools emphasize family as a very important part of the overall martial arts experience.
what does a martial artist like you do to stay in shape and how do you train for three different categories? Well, it, it all starts, I get up six o'clock and I uh, move right into what I, I six believe. o'clock in the morning? It's uh, six o'clock. Oh, yeah, six o'clock. <laughs> but it's a key for me. I go right into prayer and meditation and I do that at least for about maybe 20 minutes or so. And then I'm off and running for about an hour. And that's how I start my day. It helps me be able to clear my mind. At the same time, I listen to positive thinking tapes, musical tapes, you know, I, I gotta stay pumped up because after the workout, I have to go into teaching. So I have to stay pumped up, I have to get my, get the right frame of mind, I have to get the right attitude, a positive attitude. I believe that's important, your attitude. After the morning workout, I, I'm off to the school. From 10 to 9.30 at night, I'm teaching. And I also have another workout in between the day when I, so when I should be out taking a lunch break, or when everybody else is out taking a lunch break, I'm working out for two hours, working my forms and my weapons. And then when I start teaching classes around four o'clock, I'm working with the students, constantly working, putting out that energy. That's a pretty extensive day though, isn't it? I mean, all day long. This is a day to do a sleep with the end. Thank you.